Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Office on Violence Against Women Fiscal Year 2023 Pre-Application Information Session for the Research and Evaluation Initiative Program. On behalf of the Office on Violence Against Women, the Research and Evaluation Team, also referred to as r and &E, welcomes you to this call. Again, my name is Kaya Jackson, and I am a management and program analyst and a member of the RNE team. I would also like to introduce our supervisor and associate director, Ginger Barron. For the duration of this information session, American Sign Language and Spanish interpretation will be made available per Jonathan's instructions, and applicants that require a paper copy of these materials should contact 202-307-6026, or you may email ovw.research at usdoj.gov. Next slide. Before we get started, you may find it helpful to have the r &E solicitation in front of you for a point of reference during this information session. There is a lot of information to cover, so we will stop periodically to allow for questions. However, there will be moments when we will need to move on to ensure all information is covered before the end of this webinar. The purpose of the pre-application information session is to highlight a few key points in the solicitation. However, it is not the intent, nor is there sufficient time to go over every aspect of the RE solicitation. Therefore, the, agen the agenda for this session is to cover an overview of the Office on Violence Against Women, also referred to as OVW, an overview of the Research and Evaluation Initiative, also referred to as RE, federal award information, eligibility information, mandatory program requirements, registration, application components, and submission information, and application review information. We may be unable to address all the information included in the PowerPoint. However, these slides will be posted on the OVW website for your reference. We ask that you submit all questions in the chat box to ensure we can capture them. We will read the questions aloud so all participants know which question we are responding to. We will also try not to repeat the question if it's already been answered, so your attention to the questions and answers is important. Next slide. Office on Violence Against Women. So OVW is a component of the United States Department of Justice. It was created in 1995, and OVW administers grant programs authorized by the Violence Against Women Act, also referred to as VAWA, and subsequent legislation and provides national leadership on issues of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking. OVW grants support coordinated community responses to hold offenders accountable and serve victims. Next slide. OVW has priorities this year that cut across all our programs, and you can find them reflected in the topics for research and evaluation section on page nine of the solicitation. For the sake of time, we will not go through each of these priorities, but again, you can find them on page nine of the solicitation. Next slide. So next we'll discuss an overview of the research and evaluation initiative, including the program description, What's new about the program this year? Purpose areas for topics of research and evaluation. And just, we lost you there, Ginger. We lost the slide. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, areas of study and out of scope activities. Next slide. So the RNE program is authorized by 34 USC 122. 91B7. The purpose of the RE initiative is to research and evaluate approaches to combating domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking. The initiative is designed to support researcher practitioner partnerships to study VAWA funded strategies for serving victims and holding victims accountable. 
and by generating more knowledge about strategies for serving victims and holding offenders accountable. Communities that benefit from VAWA funding will be better equipped to align their work with practices that are known to be effective, and they will be more capable of generating empirical knowledge on the efficacy of new and promising ways of doing things. Next slide. So what's new about this program this year? The 2022 reauthorization of the VAWA Act and the FY 2023 Appropriations Act established several new OVW programs that involve research and evaluation. And so for the purposes of this presentation today, the terms purpose areas and topics for r and &E are synonymous. One of the topics calls specifically for research on trauma-informed police and prosecutorial responses to sexual assault and domestic violence. Others include research on LGBT specific services, research on restorative justice, and research on language access and responses to VAWA crimes. These are areas where OVW has welcomed and even funded research in the past. What's different this year is that we are calling for research in these areas specifically as it relates to new programs authorized in the 2022 reauthorization of VAWA and new funding OVW has to administer. We are also inviting research related to the Department of Justice's newly reissued guidance on eliminating gender bias and the law enforcement response to sexual assault and domestic violence. If you are interested in submitting an application under one of these subtopics, it is a good idea to take a look at the actual statutory language of the new programs and or the reissued policing guidance. I will paste the links in the chat shortly for your convenience and please know that we expect and welcome questions from applicants uh, considering who are considering applying under these subtopics. Next slide. So additional purpose areas include evaluations of funded interventions and VAWA funded interventions refer to any activity that is funded or could potentially be funded through OVW grant programs to address VAWA crimes. OVW is especially interested in studying the effectiveness of interventions that cut across multiple grant programs and align with one or more of OVW's office-wide goals and priorities. Evaluation of training curricula, tools, and other technical assistance resources developed and implemented with OVW grant funds. Secondary data analyses related to domestic and dating violence sexual assault and or stalking, and research and evaluation and data analysis related to domestic violence homicide prevention. Next slide. Another topic includes the evaluations of emerging initiatives for serving victims of VAWA crimes and holding offenders accountable. Those topics include Flexible financial assistance or other ways of mitigating survivors' financial insecurity resulting from their victimization. Strategies for serving justice involved, incarcerated, and or formerly incarcerated survivors. Means of supporting survivors' recovery that are outside of the mainstream, including but not limited to art therapy, writing workshops, yoga, massage, animal assisted interventions, self-defense and martial art classes, thematic interventions, community engagement, and ways of healing that are rooted in cultural tradition. Next slide. A few more topics that fall under the event evaluations of emerging initiatives include, innovations include, approaches to addressing the safety, healing, and justice, legal needs of survivors, whose lives intersect with the child welfare system, including protective parents whose children are removed from them, youth in foster care, and youth aging out of foster care, including pregnant and parenting youth. Engaging cultural, culturally specific community-based organizations and youth in prevention and response programming. And lastly, engaging community violence intervention programs as a prevention of and response to VAWA crimes. Next slide. 
activities that compromise victim safety and recovery or undermine offender accountability. So are any applications that involve appro approaches that compromise victim safety and undermine offender accountability may receive point deductions during peer review and may be removed from consideration altogether. This includes activities listed in the solicitation companion guide, as well as methods that aren't in keeping with the methodological principles outlined in the solicitation, which we'll get to shortly. And shortly, I will paste a link in the chat for the solicitation companion guide. Next slide. So the solicitation lists out of scope activities on pages nine and 10. Be sure to look at that section and inquire with us if you have any questions as out of scope applications may be removed from consideration. Next slide. Areas of study OVW is interested in funding research and evaluation on the topic that will contribute to knowledge in the six areas of study listed on the screen. This includes justice, victims' needs, impact, cultural disparities and access, indicators of success, and reducing recidivism. And you can read more about these areas of study in the solicitation. Next slide. So now we're going to pause for any questions you may have. Please add any questions you may have to the chat box and we will answer them individually. Can we have folks unmute too if they have questions or must questions be in the chat? All right. Ginger, we do have one question in the chat box. The question is from Leanne or Lene. My apologies if I mispronounce your name. Is funding only available for evaluation research on activities already supported by VAWA or that could be supported by VAWA if feasible or desirable? Thanks, Kai, and thanks to Lynette. Can I get a confirmation that you can hear me before I answer? Yes, we can hear you. Great, thanks, Kaya. So, um, the absolutely not like the uh, the research that you you propose or the intervention that you propose to study or evaluate um, does not need to be currently funded through an OVW grant, but it does need to be something that falls within the scope of what OVW can fund through at least one grant program. So to give you an example, uh, an advocacy model of some sort, or maybe a court model, um, th those tend to, those are activities that can be funded through some OVW grant programs. Um, typically offender treatment is something that's outside the scope of, uh, of OVW grant programs. So that that's something where if you were considering an evaluation in that lane, you'd wanna check with us and, and give us some more information so we could get back to you about whether it falls within the scope of, of how we can use these funds since they have to um, be tied to uh, the rest of VAWA programming in some way. But no, if you, even if it's not currently grant funded, that is okay. Looks like we have Thanks, some... Ginger. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Uh, so the second question here, could this be funded? Fun, could the funding be used to stand up a sexual assault prevalence study for a certain geography? Uh, I think we would need to, Kristen, um, this might be something we want to talk about a little further because it's, re it's really a question of does it fit under any of those topic areas that uh, that Kaya reviewed earlier that are outlined in the solicitation? Um, typically, we're looking at at evaluations of interventions, but there are obviously uh, some other other uh, topics in there, including the emerging innovations, secondary data analyses. So we'd want to chat with you to get a little more information and give you a. a a firm answer on whether it sounds like it's um, within these topics or not. So maybe we follow up afterwards. Thanks, Ginger. And then we have one more question before we move on. Well, two. Um, Tsushima, Tsushima, my apologies if I mispronounced your name, is interested in using technology in the form of in the form of uh, that has an anonymous feature to create a safe and secure platform for victims to express their concern 
and provide education and awareness. Can a program like that be considered in the form of an application? That is a great question. And the answer is it's kind of a bit of a gray area, another one where we might want to talk afterwards, because the, the goal of this program is to support researcher practitioner partnerships to study uh, VAWA funded interventions with the idea that we want to turn around uh, findings that have practical utility for practitioners. So some we, we have received applications before for apps that um, that operate kind of outside the realm of any victim services provider or, or any kind of entity that OVW could fund. Um, the, in, in certain cases, those were considered within scope, but there was a preference in the, in the uh, fine, you know, when we were formulating our funding recommendations for, for programs that had more of a direct link in terms of being able uh, to inform the work that practitioners are doing on the ground. So it's not a definite no, but, but keeping in mind that the priority really is, is to generate these findings that have practical utility, it can be a consideration. So please reach out to Kaya or, or me if you'd like to discuss this in a little more detail. And Kaya, I see there's a question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying thank you. There's one more from Sarah. Right, clarifying the differences between topics and the areas of study. Great question, Sarah. The areas of study, those six areas are uh, virtually the same every year. So if you look back at our solicitations, the, the language is very similar. Those are essentially the buckets of knowledge that we want to fill through this R&E initiative. The topics which, can, which change from year to year home in more on what our specific priorities and areas of interest are that year, and they all have the potential um, to contribute to multiple uh, areas of study under those six. Wonderful. Thank you, Ginger. So for the sake of time, we're going to continue with the presentation and we will have another opportunity for questions. So if you want to add more questions to the chat box, feel free to do so. Next slide. So next we're going to discuss federal award information. Next slide. Great. So at a glance, so the grants.gov number for the solicitation is O dash O V W dash two zero two three dash one seven one seven two eight. The CFDA number is one six dot zero. The award period is up to three years, 36 months. The funding levels are up to $450,000. The registration for the system for award management, also referred to as SAM and grants.gov, should be immediately, but no later than June 29th, 2023 at 11.59 p.m. to ensure that you are registered in an appropriate time. Yes, grants closing date is on July 5th, 2023 at 9 by 9 p.m. And the period of performance start date is on November 1st. Next slide. So award periods and amounts. So the budget cap for the, for the solicitation for each project $450,000, and that includes direct and indirect costs. Budgets, including the total estimated funding requested on the SF-424, must reflect the requested project duration no more than 36 months. RNE awards typically are in the range of $300,000 to $450,000. All awards are subject to the availability of appropriated funds and any modifications or additional requirements that may be imposed by law. Budgets should include funding for accessibility and compensation for project partners and research participants. More information on the budget can be found on page 19 of the solicitation. Next slide. 
So the following entities are eligible to apply for RE funding nonprofits, including culturally specific and population specific organizations with 501c3 status with the IRS, nonprofits, including culturally specific and population specific organizations without 501c3 status with the IRS. Private institutions of higher education, public and state controlled institutions of higher education, city or township governments, county governments, state governments, Native American tribal governments, federally recognized, Native American tribal organizations other than federally recognized tribal governments, faith-based organizations, and community-based organizations that fall under one of those eligibility criteria or categories can apply to. Next slide. It's critical applicants follow all the instructions in the solicitation and get started early so there's time to troubleshoot any issues you encounter. If you have questions, please reach out. Seemingly minor errors or missed items can result in an application being de deemed incomplete or ineligible or can interfere with getting the application submitted on time. A lot of work goes into preparing a grant application and you do not want to minor and you don't want to uh, miss an oversight to result in your application not going forward to peer review. Next slide. So this next section will discuss uh, mandatory program requirements. Next slide. For the sake of time, I will not read the entire slide word for word, but the important thing to note is that any project funded under the solicitation must adhere to the methodological principles and these can be found starting on page 12 of the solicitation. Next slide. Again, you can uh, refer to the solicitation, which outlines information on the types of research OVW will not support. Next slide. Confidentiality and human rights and human subject protection. Any recipient of an award under the solicitation will be required to comply with DOJ regulations on confidentiality and human subject protection. Applicants must submit a privacy certificate with their application, but they do not need to have IRB approval at the time they apply. If you receive a grant, you will need to provide documentation of IRB approval or exemption post award. Next slide. Expected products. OVW expects products to result from each award under the solicitation. This can look like one or more presentations made by a webinar or conferences, one or more products written in layperson's terms and intended for practitioners and the general public and or the general public, and one or more scholarly articles, meaning publishable, peer-reviewed, scientific journal articles, and or, if appropriate, law review journal articles, book chapters, or books in the academic press. Next slide. SAM and grants.gov registration. So the cover of the solicitation provides information on registering. You can also refer to pages 31 and 32 of the solicitation for more information on the registration project process and due dates. Submitting a complete application before the deadline involves registering in three different places. The System for Award Management, also known as SAM, Grants.gov, and Just Grants. The solicitation and these slides lay out those steps in detail. If you think you are going to apply to RE, 
we recommend you immediately refer to this section and get started right away so that you will be in good shape to submit your application. Next slide. So the application, so applicants must complete the following forms in grants.gov. The application for federal assistance, which is also referred to as SF-424, as well as the disclosure of lobbying activities, also referred to as SFLLL. The standard applicant information section in the Just Grants application is pre-populated with the SF-424 data submitted in grants.gov. So we'll pause here quickly before we go into the second half to see if there are any questions. And so our first question from Susan states, would a statewide coalition of domestic violence programs qualify as a nonprofit that could apply for funding? And I put a note in the chat to Susan, uh, yet we have state coalitions that apply and have received funds. So as long as the coalition meets at least one of those eligibility categories in the solicitation, then that's fine. I'll also address uh, verbally uh, Mona's question, which was just to clarify um, for certain that uh, you do not need to have Institutional Review Board IRB approval at the time you're applying. Um, if you're selected for a grant, then the, uh, and, and there's not IRB approval uh, on record at the time that we fund the award, then post-award grantees need to submit. Uh, documentation of IRB approval or exemption before they can access funds to conduct the study. I'd also like to clarify too that there's no uh, preference given in the review process for projects that have IRB approval versus those that don't. And most of our projects do not have IRB approval at the time we fund them. Thank you, Ginger. I'm not seeing any more questions right now, but we will have one more opportunity for questions. For the sake of time, we'll just move forward and get to the remaining questions um, during that time. Next slide. Application component. Next slide. So letters of intent are encouraged but not required. You can submit a non-binding letter of intent by June 1st, 2023 to ovw.research at usdoj.gov. Interested applicants who do not submit a letter of intent are still eligible to apply. For more information on letter of intent, please view page 15 in the solicitation. Next slide. All applicants must include the following four components a proposal abstract, a proposal narrative, a budget detail worksheet and narrative, and required appendices. Applications that do not include these components will be considered substantially incomplete and will not be considered for funding. Next slide. The abstract, no more than, it should be no more than 400 words, and should summarize the proposed project in plain language, including the primary activity, expected outcomes, intended beneficiaries, and sub-recipient involvement. And the abstract does not count against the page limit for the proposal narrative. Next slide. The proposal narrative must include the five sections identified in the solicitation. And it's important to address the criteria for each section found on pages 17 and 18 of the solicitation. The five sections are statement of the problem, project design and implementation, next slide, potential impact, capabilities and competencies, and a dissemination plan. The proposal narrative must not exceed 30, 30 double space pages and 12 point font with one inch margins. 
the title page, abstract, appendices, including appendant tables, charts and figures, and government forms. Do not count toward the 30 page limit. Next slide. Applicants must submit a detailed budget and budget narrative and must upload the associated documentation as an attachment in just grants. OVW strongly encourages applicants to prepare and submit budgets in a spreadsheet using Excel or similar software. The budget worksheet and budget narrative are not scored, but are required for an application to be sent to peer review. The budget narrative must describe each line item requested in the budget and explain all costs included in the budget. There is a sample budget and a training available on the OVW website, as well as a sample template for the budget detail worksheet. For additional information on allowable and unallowable costs, see the funding restriction section and the solicitation. Next slide. So I, for the sake of time, we won't go through all of these appendices but a list of required appendices are provided on pages 23 and tw through 26 in the solicitation. And these are appendices that applicants are required to submit with their application. You can refer again to pages 23 through 26 in the solicitation for more comprehensive details on the required appendices. Next slide. All right, so we are going to quickly discuss some additional application components, which each application should include. The co additional components will not be scored, but must be included with the application. Some components will be generated during the application submission process, while others will be uploaded and attached to the application in just grants. The first two are, is the letter of non-supplanting and a confidentiality notice form. And you can read more information on each of those components in the solicitation. Next slide. The another uh, two additional components. The first is a pre-award risk, risk assessment, which each applicant must submit as an attachment. The next is a summary da data sheet, and you can refer to page 29 in the solicitation for a list of items that are to be collected for the, for the summary data sheet. The indirect cost rate agreement. Applicants that intend to charge indirect cost must have a current, signed, federally approved, indirect cost rate agreement and must upload and attach a copy of the agreement to their application in just grants. Applicants, applicants rate may elect to charge a de minimis rate of 10% of the modified total direct cost, which may be used indefinitely. And lastly, organizations that wish to negotiate an indirect cost rate to contact OVW Grants Financial Management Division at ovw.gfmd at usdoj.gov. Or you may call at 1-888-514-5500. Next slide. Uh, and another additional component for your application is the summary of other federal funding. Applicants must disclose all current and recent OVW awards, if applicable, as well as any pending applications on which the applicant is a sub-recipient. 
applicants also must disclose all other federal grant programs from which the applicant currently receives funding or for which it has applied for funding in FY 2023 to do similar work. And disclosures and assurances. And so, oh. Sorry, Kaya, my, <laughs> yes, it slipped. Um, I'm trying to get to where we are. Okay, thank you, my apologies. No, no worries. And so this slide really just covers a list of the disclosures and assurances and certifications um, that applicants are required to submit. And you can read more on this information um, on pages 21 through 22 in the solicitation. Next slide. All right. So key submission information. And so formatting and technical requirements uh, applicants must follow these requirements for all documents attached to the application unless otherwise noted. Points may be deducted for applications that do not adhere to the following requirements. You can find these requirements listed on page 15 in the solicitation. Next slide. And so when you are submitting your application, the complete application package, the solicitation, including links to required forms, is available on grants.gov and on the OVW website. All applications must be submitted electronically first in grants.gov, including the SF-424 and the SFLLL, and then in just grants. OVW will not accept applications after the Just Grants deadline. The Grants.gov deadline is four days before the Just Grants application deadline. Next slide. So really quickly, <clears throat> applications will be submitted to OVW in two steps. The applicant must submit the forms, the SF-424, and the Disclosure of Lobbying Activities Form, SFL, SFLLL, in grants.gov. The website is there for reference, as well as listed in the solicitation. Step two, the applicant must then submit the full application, including all attachments in just grants, no later than July 5th at 9 p.m. Eastern. Next slide. Applicants experiencing technical difficulties with any of the systems listed on this listed a while ago during registration, during account updates, or during the application submission process should contact the appropriate office. You can view this contact information on page 33 of the solicitation. Next slide. And lastly, we'll just quickly go through application review and information. The applications will be scored based on the degree to which the application responds to each section and addresses each element in the section. Furthermore, applications will be scored based upon the quality of the response, capacity, of the applicant and any partners, and the level of detail provided. Each element must be addressed in the section in which it is requested. Points may be deducted if the applicant does not include the information in the appropriate section, regardless of if it is included elsewhere in the application. And just a quick note that the budget and budget narrative are not scored, but required for an application to be sent to peer review. Next slide. So we're just gonna wrap up with some resources on which will be available in the slide. And I just wanted to also quickly note that you can find um, more detailed information on the scoring criteria, criteria and how it's weighted in the solicitation in its respective section. 
And so we are providing some resources. We added a few links in the chat. These links are also available in the slides, which you'll have access to at a later date. Next slide. Again, these are resources from OVW and the Department of Justice. We've also included a few of these links in the chat box for you already. So you can access these uh, when, when, you, when you need them. Next slide. This slide just provides a list of financial resources, um, such as the budget training for OVW applicants, which is also available on the website, the DOJ financial guide, cost allocation information, and the uniform guidance, the statute to CFR part 200. Next slide. This is a slide with contact information for the federal awarding agency contact. Again, we've provided contact information for our financial department, technical questions for grants.gov support, and OVW just grants support. Next slide. Great. If you have any questions about the solicitation, you can email OVW dot research at usdoj.gov or you may call 202-307-6026. And my contact information as well as my associate, our so, associate director, Ginger Barron, he's on the line with us and has been answering questions is located on this slide. Next slide. Wonderful. Okay. Well, that's all I have for you all today. Ginger, do we have any unanswered questions? You've been answering folks in the chat box, it looks like. Hey, everyone. First of all, thank you so much, Kaya, for going through all of that important information today. And um, my thanks to uh, folks at Latos and our interpreters today for supporting this. And thank you. Um, to everyone who took time to be here. Let's open it up for more questions in a moment. And I'm going to very kind of quickly summarize a few of the questions that have come in that I've answered in the interim here. Uh, one question was about phased funding and if we release the funds in phases. So to be clear about that, uh, typically these awards go out with two holds on funds. I say typically because there can occasionally the other uh, scenarios. The first hold relates to needing to have a cleared budget. So our finance division and Kaya and I work with recipients to get a final budget together and approved, and then we lift that hold on funds. Um, usually there's access to a little bit of funding to um, uh, do some planning and, and seek IRB approval in, in that interim. And then um, the funds remain on hold unless and until we receive that documentation of IRB approval or exemption. And if you need to revise your privacy certificate, then a revised privacy certificate. Uh, once we have that, we lift the hold and the grantee typically will have access to the full balance of funds to do the project in full. We also had some uh, some questions about whether you absolutely need to have a practitioner partner. Uh, while the emphasis and focus of R and E is on researcher practitioner partnerships, uh, partnership is not a hard and fast requirement. And in some unique uh, cases with projects, we we funded projects where there is not a uh, practitioner partner. So if you have questions about whether what you're considering is within scope for r &E, um, and how that ha might fall in terms of focus and priorities, please reach out to Kaya and I, or, and we can, um, we can walk you through some of that. Jesse Lyons asked if there are, uh, if there's going to be ability to access the questions and answers in the transcript. Uh, I'm wondering if anybody at Latos knows the answer to that. Um, if the, if not, we can be sure to, to share out that same information with people who registered today. Hi there, Ginger. Um, yes, the, the Q&A will be um, included in the transcript. Wonderful, thank you. 
You're welcome. There was also a question earlier about what qualifies as a, a practitioner. And we don't explicitly define that. Uh, so many, I'm sure that Kaya and I wouldn't be able to think of all the different uh, types of entities that could serve as practitioner partners. So if you have a question about whether something is, is in the right lane for r &E, please contact Kaya. Do we have additional questions in our, our last remaining minute? I will keep an eye on the chat, but yeah, okay. I have the, I'm sorry, I'm entering it into the chat, but I'm not sure it's being seen. Sure. Um, so I just wanted, I was wondering if you could briefly expand on, um, so two two things in, that you mentioned and that I in fact see in the in the call, um, it says on one hand, I think it's page seven, that the, um, you know, that there's an interest in studying the effectiveness of, of interventions that cut across multiple mm -hmm. grant programs, but of course that align with OVW's objectives, right? And then um, also there's that piece where any, you know, um, sought funding for, quote, similar work should mm -hmm. be disclosed. So I'm wondering how those sort of fit together and what the general approach is on how much, um, you know, projects should, preferably should, or are looked disfavorably upon sort of um, a, a project that in some way augments um, other grant funding, or is it better to sort of go in a different direction? I guess I'm just having a little trouble reconciling those two things. Thank you. Right. And, and I might and I might not have, have the best answer at my fingertips, and we might need to talk later so I, I can better understand. I, the, in terms of intervention, being interested in interventions that cut across programs, um, to give you an example, uh, law enforcement responses to uh, sexual assault and domestic violence are something that can be funded under our STOP formula program, our rural grant program, tribal governments grant program, and the improving criminal justice responses program. So everything that kind of is under that law enforcement response piece and it you know, cuts across multiple uh, programs uh, within OVW and is of interest. Um, with that in mind, that there is a, a section, a, a requirement during the application that applications for, for similar funding be disclosed. That's partly so that um, so that we're aware of of whether there's other other requests for funding out there. So in case you know we can work with a, a recipient if if they receive you know funding from multiple funders for the same project to ensure that we avoid a supplanting issue. So I think the cut across multiple programs issue and the need to disclose other funding are are kind of separate. So that's also why I'm thinking I, we might want to talk if, in case I'm not following. Sure, thank you. Yeah, that helps that you're the first is more internally focused. So mm -hmm. yeah, and, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stay on to answer more questions, I, but I know we're at the hour and I just uh, want to really encourage everyone to uh, check out Kaya's chat with our email address. Um, we very much want to make sure that you have correct and thorough answers and really welcome questions whenever they come up. So never, ever hesitate to contact us if you have a question about applying. I'm going to stay on uh, just a little longer if there's additional questions. Thanks, Ginger, and thanks everyone for joining today. I'll be on the call with Ginger for a few more minutes as well, but we appreciate your time today and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much, Kaya. Thank you, everybody.